The nationalists have just taken a major victory in Europe. Marine Le Pen, right-wing nationalist in France, is now the biggest party. That's my understanding. It's complicated because of the European elections, the EU. It's not national level. But also, Italy's Salvini has surged in the European elections. And as you know, the Brexit party is, uh, my understanding is the Brexit party was the biggest uh, uh, winner in the elections. So a lot of uh, right-wing nationalism. But the other thing is, is that the Greens, the far left, actually made serious gains. What does this say? Well, look, the right-wing nationalist stuff was always predictable. With Trump, with Brexit, Australia, India, etc., we're seeing this rise of nationalism sweep across, well, the world now, it seems. The Greens, we didn't expect as much. But this says one thing to me, polarization. They say on Sky News that the centrists, the, the, the center is fragmenting. That's, that's, that's pretty bad news, okay? Look, it's one thing if you think it's good your side is winning. It's another thing when we see political polarization to both extremes because where is this going to bring us? Actual conflict. You know, when you have a center left and center right being the left and the right, but they're very close to each other like we saw in the US 20 years ago, you can have disagreements, but people work with each other. Now we're getting to the point where the far left is calling the other side the worst of the worst, and they're both calling each other the worst of the worst. When both tribes view each other as evil, and they do, this is what's happening, it spells bad news. I think the reason the right-wing nationalists are winning, though, is because regular people think the far left has gone off the deep end. And I believe that's fair to point out. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's read through the story. But I've got some data points. I've got a graph showing where we're at, and I've got some... Um, some sleazy pollstering that try and make it seem like the UK doesn't want Brexit. But, but uh, before we get started, go to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work, monthly donation option, cryptocurrency, physical address. Of course, you can just share this video, like it or comment because the engagement boosts it in the algorithm on YouTube. And if you're watching, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, you can leave a good review that always helps. But let's go back to the story here and figure out what's going on from Sky News. Europe is seeing a major political shift as the traditional center-left and center-right parties were edged out by populist, environmentalist, and far-right parties in the European Parliament elections. The far-right gained precedence on Sunday following four days of polarized vote of a polarized vote across the bloc, with parties led by Italy's populist Matteo Salvini and French far-right leader Marine Le Pen becoming among the biggest in the European Assembly. As Mr. Salvini told supporters at his party headquarters in Milan, the rules are changing in Europe, quite literally. At this point, I think it needs to be said that right-wing nationalism, right-wing populism is mainstream. Listen, Trump winning was considered a fluke. Brexit winning was considered a fluke. But at what point do you say, I think this is what people are actually interested in? Now, of course, one of the strat strategies of the far left is to accuse everybody of being, you know, literally the worst of the fringe far right. And that's absurd. A lot of these people that are called far right are actually just like nationalist, like center libertarian types. Like how they call Sargon far right is beyond me, right? The dude's argued for like uh, social programs and he's, he's very, very, he's, he's rather centrist, I, I'll say. They say, it was a good night for pro-environment greens who are riding a green way propelled by recent climate change demonstrations. Provisional results early on Monday showed green parties in Germany, France, the UK, and elsewhere came fourth in the election with 70 seats, an increase of 18 compared to 2014's elections. What are we seeing? This is social media in action. I have showed this study multiple times. University of Missouri has this graph showing the political polarization happening on social media, where the, the fringe of the far left and the far right are being amplified. Now, I'm not saying the parties that won are the fringe of the far left and the far right. No, the parties that won are, are absolutely the result of the polarization because the middle is gone. There's no middle anymore. It's either, you know, like, look, I made a tweet the other day about Captain Marvel, and I got inundated with these weird, like, gamer feminists who were accusing me of being like a white male sexist or something. And it was the weirdest thing. But this is the kind of conversation that erupts. So when you see on Twitter, someone says something like, man, climate change sounds like a problem. And then everyone dogpiles you. It pushes people to the far left and the far right. I will also add, though, the narrative isn't being controlled anymore. It was very easy in the past for the media to tell you what was or wasn't true, and they still try. But now there's social media. So when it comes to what's happening in Europe with immigration and refugees and the crisis, 
you are going to get people who see these videos, who hear what's going on, who are impacted by it, and they're going to vote for nationalists who want stronger borders. One of the biggest mistakes that the EU made, in my opinion, was not controlling its borders properly. The EU isn't necessarily a bad idea. I think it's being implemented poorly. I'm not super well-versed on European politics, but I generally like the idea of a union, especially like Europe, because it's not too dissimilar to what we did in the United States a long time ago. So it's possible it could function well. The problem is you have no control of your borders. People are flooding into, in, into these countries and it's scaring the population. And they're saying enough. If the EU won't do anything about it, in fact, the EU wants more migrants telling Poland to bring in more migrants then the people are going to say, no, enough, enough. So here's the thing. You see these videos in, in uh, uh, Italy and Spain of boats coming on the shore and hundreds of people running full speed through, the, through these beaches. That freaks people out. Whatever your opinion is on borders, that freaks people out. These people then in turn vote a certain way. But don't take my word for it, okay? It's not just my opinion. Matthew Iglesias, co-founder of Vox. I'm pretty sure he's a co-founder, but he's at, he's at Vox. He said, the reason anti-immigrant movements are on the rise almost everywhere is that almost everyone is at or near all-time highs in the foreign-born population share. He said, I don't care for these parties, their leaders, or their take on immigration, but it would be truly odd to have such a large shift in the underlying situation without anyone complaining. Well, strangely, this sounds like Matthew Iglesias pushing this weird fringe great replacement conspiracy theory. Now, I don't know, like I got into an argument, I guess. I guess you can call an argument with, with um, uh, an Antifa guy, Mike Suchberry, because I, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I'm like, what's the conspiracy theory? Because as Matthew Iglesias correctly points out, a lot of these countries are at all-time highs. He, said, he, said, he says almost everywhere for foreign-born population. I don't think that's a conspiracy theory if Matthew Iglesias is pushing it, right? Am I wrong? So I don't know what the conspiracy theory is supposed to be. Apparently, it's like the elites are orchestrating on a purpose to like end white people or something. That sounds crazy, but it is true. Matthew Iglesias isn't wrong. He does point out, however, that most people are okay with immigration. But the point is, he's right. It would be odd to have, to have such a large shift in the underlying situation without anyone complaining. And they are. Because most of these countries are majority white. You are going to see people saying like, hey, they're, they're going to say that Italy is for Italians and that France is for the French. And that's fine, right? I'm not, I'm not here to tell them what they, what they should. I actually think we need strong borders. And I think the EU could have been a great thing that actually helped refugees and did good if they actually implemented stronger border controls, which they didn't do. And now it's falling apart because here's the thing. You see these videos of people coming up on boats in Italy. You see, you hear about what's happening with these NGO ships in Italy. What happens? The people say the EU can't do it. Italy needs to secure its borders. They go nationalist and then the EU gets hit with trouble. But don't get me wrong, the EU's got a ton of other problems. So ultimately, I'm not surprised we're seeing nationalism. But also keep in mind, I know it's not like a perfectly apt, um, uh, it's like a mirror image. In the US, US nationalists are about the United States. We're not seeing like statist, you know, people who are like, you know, go Illinois, woo, just Illinois borders. No, it's like um, the United States, the union is the country, and they want to pr protect the borders of the entire union. Europe could function in a very similar way. Unfortunately, they're trying to bring more migrants in for whatever reason. Uh, when I was in Sweden, they had on their website, the Swedish government saying that they needed migrants because there weren't, they, the, the population was, was shrinking and the economy was going to shrink with it. I'm not sure that's entirely a bad thing. I guess if you're competing with China, Brazil, India, etc., cetera, it, it probably is. So that's not a conspiracy theory. Um, that was actually on the Swedish government's website. But check this out. So there's a couple of really interesting points that I want to bring up. For one, here we have a graph that says how leave and remain votes split. The remain vote, this is interesting, is higher than the leave. And this is something that's being pushed around by a lot. It's, it was pushed by the BBC. But, but journalists are actually pushing back saying, wait a minute. If you add the, the conservatives to leave, which they should be, then you will see that leave does surpass remain. It would be absurd to assume that Remain is higher. It, that's, that's absurd, especially considering the strength of the Brexit party. So what you're going to start seeing now as the machine tries to protect itself is they're going to claim it's the minority. It's not real. Listen, I'm sorry. Look, maybe. OK, I'll, let's go with this. Labor and conservative, whatever. We'll leave them out of it. I have no idea why they're not included in Leave and Remain as, as if the labor and the conservatives don't don't have an opinion on Leave and Remain is, is ridiculous. But let's let's think about this. 
Right-wing nationalists are making huge gains. Marine Le Pen, uh, Marine Le Pen is apparently the biggest party now in France for European share or whatever. That's my understanding. I could be wrong. Again, not an expert on European politics. But it's not a fluke. When Brexit happens, when the, Bre- the Brexit party ha- was, was launched like six weeks ago, and it dominated the vote in the UK, that's crazy. That's seriously crazy. The people are going to be like, the only thing I care about is Brexit, not these other parties. You saw Trump, right? Trump's, Trump's approval, Trump's uh, uh, everything is up, 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 up. Uh, it's not the highest it's ever been. The polls are showing that he's floating around like, you know, like 43 or 44% approval rating. But in terms of, uh, there's a recent poll from CBS News saying that 70% of the people in this country view the economy as doing well, and they're giving credit to Trump for doing it. It's not a fluke. The media is wrong. They keep saying, no, no, it's the minority. I, I don't know about that. Check this out. This is a graph from Politico. Euroskeptic performance. I love how they call it Euroskeptic instead of just saying nationalist. Because like, what does that mean, Euroskeptic? They don't like, the, they don't like the, the European Union. Sure. But they're mostly talking about protecting their borders. We can see that there's been a big increase, especially from 2014. Not everywhere. Some countries have gone down. But definitely, you can see 2019, huge increases in the percentage. So um, I think it's fair to point out, as much as a lot of people are acting like it's fringe, it's far right. Okay, let's talk about what far right means. They're calling Marine Le Pen far right. Um, I'm pretty sure Marine Le Pen is now like the biggest party. Is that far right or is that like just right wing? The point I'm trying to make is, If they are the biggest, if this is the mainstream, then how do you call it far from anything? If the center is the gauge, I guess you could say fine. If you have the far left and the far right and the center, there's there's still going to be a center with nobody in it. But I guess then, yeah, everyone's far left and far right. There is one more thing I want to bring up, which is really, really, really fascinating. Check this out. European elections, Catalan controversy, exiled and jailed Spanish politicians win seats. So for those that aren't familiar in Catalonia, there, uh, 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 I don't know what you'd call it, a, a province, a state of, of Spain, and they want independence. At least many of them do, not everybody. But this, this dude, um, apparently Puigdemont, uh, Catalan separatist leader, uh, Car- uh, Carles Puigdemont, I don't know how to say his first name, and Oriol Juancaris both claimed victories in the European elections, but huge question marks remain over whether they will actually be allowed to become EU lawmakers. That's crazy. The dude's in self-imposed exile, apparently. He uh, jailed and exiled. This is how crazy the nationalism has gotten. Catalonia has been pretty self-determined. Like, they, they, want, the, they want to be their own country for a long time. Uh, but now it's not even about Spain. It's not even about Italy or the UK. Even Catalonia elected people to MEP, separatists, which is not surprising. It seems like the union is collapsing. But, but ultimately, I think this is... Um, it's really just a symptom of a breakdown in social cohesion, honestly. You know, you look at TV, you look at media, you look at the internet. There's a clip, okay, from Captain Marvel. It's not, it's just, just bear with me. And she grabs, a, a guy is like cat calling her or something. So she electrocutes his hand using her superpowers. He drops to his knees. She basically says, I'll let you keep your hand if you give me your jacket and your motorcycle. And I'm like, wow, that's a villain. That's like villainous behavior. Someone for personal gain, injuring and threatening to maim someone. That's what a villain would do, not a superhero. Okay, Captain Marvel being the superhero. The reason I bring this up is that I tweeted about this and I got inundated with these weird like gamer feminists who are justifying it, saying that's justice. And that to me said something because I'm like, how do I respond to these people, right? How do you respond to these people who think retribution over a slight is justice? Think about what would happen when these people get power. They're going to be like, you were mean to me, therefore I will sever your hand. That's justice. That's terrifying. What I'm really seeing is that they don't actually care about whether or not Captain Marvel was doing good or bad. They view the man as inherently evil. Therefore, he must be punished. And this is a representation of how people view the world. I grew up watching superheroes do selfless things. With great power comes great responsibility. Refusing to act for uh, selfish reasons. You look at most of the other heroes in the MCU. I, I get all these people saying things like, um, you know, what about all these other superheroes? I don't, I, I don't want to prattle on the idea of superheroes when we're talking about nationalism in Europe. But the point I'm trying to make is the view of what is right and just 
has fractured to a ridiculous degree. And I think this is one of the reasons we are seeing the Green Party, the Greens, the far left, and the far right. I, I hate to call either of them far left or far right because being an environmentalist doesn't make you far left and being a nationalist doesn't make you far right. But sure, that's how it's being framed, which is I don't think is necessarily fair. But you're getting you know further left policy and further right policy. And I think it's a representation of how, look, if you're a nationalist, you believe that you need a, a, a you need borders. I wouldn't call myself necessarily a nationalist because I, I actually believe we need to work towards international cooperation. I'm rather centrist on the issue, as you can you can suspect. But I think it's important to point out you need to control your borders. Otherwise, everything falls apart. You're, you get stripped of resources. Not a good thing. But you have these 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 two growing factions that view each other as inherently evil. That's that's it. I mean, look, Notch, the Minecraft developer guy, he said the left is evil. I don't think the left is evil. I think they've they're, they're being taken over by evil individuals. And I think the truth that I, I absolutely think there are people on the right who are evil and they're gaining power and prominence. But I don't believe I believe the mainstream left, what we're seeing with them is they're kind of passive. But, but I'll tell you one more thing. I'll tell you one more thing. The craziest thing has been happening on Facebook. Now, I don't really use Facebook that much anymore, but this kind of shocked me. There are some people I know who are just run-of-the-mill gamer types. I talk about my friends uh, every so often on this channel. My friends who know nothing about anything. They don't know who Buttigieg is. They don't know who, who Kavanaugh is. They know nothing about politics. And the craziest thing happened. Someone I know was posting about, you know, being a moderate and being a centrist. Someone who's not political. And I was like, wow, you know, why, why are my not political friends finally talking about politics now? And all of the comments were saying, like, the left has gone crazy. And I was like, wow, that, that freaks me out. Okay, no, seriously, it does freak me out. When my friends who are just gamers, who play like Division and stuff and don't pay attention to the stuff, are now saying the left has gone crazy, maybe that's why Notch, you know, Notch is the guy who made Minecraft, for, the, for those that don't know. Minecraft, one of the biggest games ever. He said the left was evil several times. Maybe when you start to see that regular apolitical people view the left as evil, something crazy is happening. And, I, and, and what's, what's crazy to me is that my friends who are saying this always consider themselves to be on the left. I think I'm ahead of the market. On most things, I'm in front of these trends, okay? I was using mobile and live stream before everybody else. I was one of the first people to use Google Glass. It was fun and silly. But I'm, I'm regularly doing things before everyone else. For whatever reason, I have no idea, okay? I was actually, uh, a, a journalism professor said, Tim Pool has the unfortunate privilege of being ahead of the market makes it hard to earn money and, and, and convince businesses to adopt technologies and things like this. But it's true. I was always uh, a liberal. I was always somebody on the left. And then I saw this craziness happening. Now, there's a lot of people who say that like, oh, so-and-so has been red-pilled or something like that, right? That's not the case, okay? There are people on the left who say like, look at so-and-so get radicalized. Here's the thing. In 2013, 2014 with Gamergate, which I know very little about, was not involved in in any capacity, it was one issue affecting one industry. And you could see it seeping onto other industries. But eventually it, it hit every aspect. And we start, now we're seeing people lose their jobs. So here's the thing. It's not about people being red-pilled. It's not like all of a sudden people realize the problem exists. It's that the problem is spreading to the mainstream. If you're a gamer and you notice these problems in your community, well, that's because it's your community. It doesn't mean the problem is that big or widespread. But then it impacts Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which got canceled and suspended, and then they brought James Gunn back. Kevin Hart in the Oscars. It's impacting ma the mainstream world, and now regular people are being impacted by this and freaking out. So I'll, I'll, I'll end with this final thought. When my friends, okay, who are not political, are saying the left is evil, and I'm, I'm, this is, I'm, I'm being dead serious, okay? They're saying like, okay, so not just saying left is evil. My friends didn't go that far. They were saying like, the left is going crazy. They view everyone as like fringe and, and insane. And I'm like, this is a dude who, who like six months ago, couldn't tell me who Brett Kavanaugh was, right? At the, at the peak of like all of this shenanigans, I have no idea what you're talking about, man, because they just play video games. But now they're like, what is happening? They're not hardcore gamers, but I'll tell you what some of the big issues are. When stores, comic shops get their license, their, their, their licenses removed because they had a keck flag. There was one shop. It was like a Magic the Gathering, you know, shop. I'll tell you what, man. Skateboarders have been hitting me up. This is the craziest thing. If there is any group of people that cares nothing for politics, it's skateboarders. Okay? I, I, I mean that. Skateboarders just want to do their thing and be left alone. 
And after the Joe Rogan podcast, I got hit up by several pro skateboarders being like, dude, you're awesome. I got emails from some of the biggest pros in the world being like, this is so crazy. I can't believe stuff's happening. And I'm like, damn, dude, I've been a skateboarder my whole life. I know how disinterested skateboarders are in everything. I have friends who are 30 years old who, who work like minimum wage jobs at supermarkets and live in a studio apartment with three other dudes just so they can keep skating. And I'm like, man, these are people who never grew up. Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about politics because it's impacting them. Skateboarding is, man, there was a pro skateboarder who made comments about women in skating and he got in trouble and it was crazy. So here's the point I'm trying to make because this is a long video. The point I'm trying to make is when my skateboarder friends, when my normie video game friends are talking about these issues, I think it's going to get way, 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 way worse. But ultimately, I think it's going to be the right wing nationalists who win for one reason. Whatever is going on with the left, the people who are the loudest are nuts. Okay. And that's the point I was making about Captain Marvel. They're messaging me saying crazy things. And I'm like, what do you, I didn't say like, it's nuts. They're talking like, it's just, they've gone crazy. They have. And there are people like me who have always been, you know, visibly and knowledgeably on the left, aligning with Democrats now being like, this has gone too far. And my friends who normally just say blue, they, 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 they go to the voting booth, they check blue. If they even bother voting are now saying they're nuts. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Man, I don't know what's going to happen. But um, my prediction is that there's going to be conflict. It's going to get bad. I don't know. I don't know. Thanks for hanging out. Stick around. More segments to come. And I will see you in a few minutes in the next segment. For, for those on YouTube, it'll be at 1 p.m. And adios.